For my 20th birthday, me and four friends took a vacation to northern Finland. We were going camping for two weeks in an extremely remote area. You see, I've always loved nature and animals, and we weren't hunting. We did go fishing a few times, and up until this experience, about 11 days in, I was really enjoying the trip. But I will never go back again. One night, we were cooking some fish over the fire, and one of my friends pointed out that we had used all the loose wood lying around the area. We decided to all go out together to get some more wood. We grabbed our flashlights and we headed off. One friend pointed out that animals might steal our food while we're away, but we shot him down saying something to the effect of, The fish are roasting over the fire, no animal will risk getting near the fire, and if they do, they'll get burned and run away. Oh, how wrong we were though. But since I'm not sure what it was that showed up, we can't be blamed for our assumptions. In the middle of our forage for firewood, we suddenly heard a loud, animalistic noise. None of us recognized what it was. It sounded almost like a pig squeal, but cleaner, louder, and perfectly clear, not raspy at all. It was almost as if it were an extremely high-pitched wolf howl. The trouble was that it was distinctly coming from the direction of our campsite. We quickly dropped all the wood and we charged back to camp. I don't know what I expected it to be, but nothing prepared me for what we found. What we saw was strange, but in the dim glow of the fire, it was immensely disturbing. Hunched over our fire was a large, hairy creature. It was holding a half-eaten fish in one hand and several untouched ones in the other, but it was staring us down like a deer caught in headlights. I distinctly remember the creature. It stood approximately five to six feet tall. It was definitely shorter than we were, but at the same time, it was much larger. It had a thick barreled body, and it had short but extremely thick and muscular arms and legs. It had pronounced joints at the knee and elbow. Despite being shorter, it looked to be about as twice as wide as we were, but not fat, just really muscular. It appeared to have human-like hands and feet, but it was covered in dark red fur on its entire body, except for its fingers, toes, and face. I noticed this because the contrast, it was massive. Its skin was pale white, as white as paper. No hint of yellow, pink, or brown pigment, almost like an albino or something. It had huge, perfectly round eyes, larger than any humans I've ever seen. It had a ridge on top of its eyes, and it had a huge jaw. Its face had odd features to it. It lacked any discernible cheeks. It just had a flat wall of skin. It had a very large, flaring nose. It protruded much like a human nose, but it was angled back just slightly, and it was exposing its nostrils to us. At this stage, its eyes, they were highly dilated, but still, it had discernible whites. This thing, it was freaking terrifying. It honestly looked like it could tear all four of us apart with ease. And perhaps adding to the fear, it clearly ate meat. After staring at us for some time, it went from its hunched squatting position to a fully upright position in an instant, and it backed away a few feet, still staring at us. It moved pretty much like a human would, and it stood fully upright. You could feel the aggression in its gaze, but its movement suggested that it was acting defensively, which alleviated our fears somewhat. Every few minutes, it would briefly dart its eyes to its side, towards a particular spot. We tried to look as big as possible, but tried to stay still at the same time. We thought to point our flashlight at it, but I feared it would provoke it. We did it anyway, and it lurched back a little, and clearly made a startled facial expression. Then, it quickly reverted back to staring at us intently. To our shock and horror, it quickly darted its hand to its side and grabbed one of our fishing poles. It aimed it at us like a spear, 
and it walked forward a few steps. This thing, it was terrifying enough without a weapon. I don't know if anyone else spotted this, but when it moved its arm to the side to grab the rod, I saw its shoulder blade, and it was much larger than any human's, which only made it even more terrifying. After it picked up the fishing rod, it repeatedly made a noise, somewhat similar to the high-pitched howl we heard before, but it had an odd inflection. It transitioned from high-pitched to slightly deeper. It sounded like a child, mimicking a fire truck almost. I decided to lunge forward at it to try and spook it into leaving, but it lunged forward too, approximately the same distance I did, and it thrusted the fishing pole toward me. At this point, we must have been less than eight feet apart. Its stare was now intently focused on me. It made another noise at me, but it was completely different from its other noises. It growled at me in a deeper tone. It almost sounded like a somewhat louder version of an adult human mimicking a wolf growl. It then snarled its teeth at me. It took another step forward, continuing to lunge the fishing rod at me and not changing its facial expressions, even slightly. I gave in to my fear, and I quickly took several steps back to my friends. The creature took a step back and changed to its previous facial expression, but as it did this, it was also taking several steps to the side. It very slowly circled us, though only completing half a circle. It ended up almost exactly opposite of where it was standing before, relative to the campfire. We whispered to each other plans, but none seemed safe. We were very scared and clueless as to what to do about this creature. But then, suddenly, it dropped the fishing pole and ran off into the woods. And to our horror, out of the bushes next to where it exited our campsite, another almost identical creature ran out, following close behind the first one. As they ran, I noticed that they ran just like humans. The way they moved their arms and legs, it perfectly mirrored the way a typical jogger runs. The second creature was slightly slimmer than the first, but other than that, it was identical as far as I saw, though I only caught a brief glimpse of it. And although their movements were human-like, they were much faster. They made no effort to clear branches out of the way, simply just charging through them. You could actually hear how loud their stomps were, but they slowly faded until you couldn't hear them at all. As scary as the creature was at the time, and knowing animal behavior, it clearly was not looking at us like food. It obviously thought that we were a threat to it, and it was acting in defense. When it was between us and the second creature, they both ran as fast as they could. The first one was likely being defensive of not just itself but the other creature as well, and perhaps it was a mate or mostly grown up child or something. We obviously planned to stay out there a lot longer, but understandably, we didn't sleep that night. Instead, we intently guarded our campsite until morning, when we hightailed it back to town. After this experience, I'm not going out there ever again. That is, without a loaded gun, at least. In order for a species to survive, it must consistently maintain a breeding population. This means that there are almost certainly many more of these things out there. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And you know what, guys? Being in the middle of nowhere in Finland and running into this strange creature, I guess you could say that these guys were almost... finished. <laughs> I'm sorry to all my Finnish fans right now. All you guys from Finland are just face palming right now. And I'm so I apologize, alright? This is the best thing I could come up with today and I really apologize. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to the Hive member that bravely shared their story for us all here, and I hope you're doing well. Uh, for the chance to have your story featured in a video, you can send your story to my email, which is in the description below. And as always, keep them coming guys, as this channel relies upon your stories to continue. 
Also, please do me a favor and just add in your email what your story is about in the description and also provide me with a short written statement of consent just so that I can be above board with everything. Also, please remember to tell me in the email if you would like to remain anonymous and please change any names if you don't want particular names to be shared. As always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for updates throughout the week. You can also catch me on my second channel, all of which have links in the description below. Thanks again for always tuning in guys, for all the love and support and I'll see you mates in the next one.